Time management during FE Electrical and Computer exam and any FE exam for that reason is probably the single biggest challenge that students encounter when taking this challenging exam. In this video, we are going to go over four very specific tips that can help you efficiently manage your time during FE Electrical and Computer exam and any other FE exam for that reason. Before we jump into this video, I would really appreciate if you could like this video and subscribe to the channel and click the bell icon if you haven't already done so. As you know, FE exam contains 110 questions which are more or less evenly split between the morning session and the afternoon session. The total exam time which you are given to actually solve the problems is 5 hours and 20 minutes which translates into just under 3 minutes per question which is a tough ask because if you go through the question and read the question that can take anywhere between 30 seconds to 45 seconds then you collect your thoughts and think about how to approach the problem you go through the NCSFE reference handbook find the correct formula that will take at least a minute you do your calculations that can take up to half a second and now we are roughly at two and a half minutes mark and this is assuming that everything goes well. Now in case you come across a question that you're not able to make sense of, you might be tempted to read it over and over again. Sometimes our ego kicks in and we're like, no, I have to crack this question. Now you're basically going in a downward spiral because you are going to spend definitely more than three minutes on that question and there is no guarantee that you're going to end up with the correct answer. So how can we make sure that we manage our time efficiently during the AFI exam? My very first tip for you is to know your calculator inside out. Regardless of the calculator that you're using, all the NCS approved calculators are pretty much offering same features. So the important thing is to stick with the calculator of your choice, preferably the calculator that you used during your college days so that you have some level of familiarity with that calculator and then make a list of all the features that are relevant to your particular FE exam. In my FE electrical and computer on demand exam preparation course, I have a bunch of videos on the calculator on features such as rectangular, to polar conversion and polar to rectangular conversion, calculating the inverse of matrices, determinant of matrices, number systems, and so on and so forth. So if it takes you three minutes to solve a question by hand, and if the calculator can help you do the same calculation within 30 seconds, you're saving yourself two and a half minutes. And if there are 10 such problems that you're able to save time, then basically you're giving yourself 25 extra minutes on the exam, which is a big deal. Because with those 25 extra minutes, you can then take a shot at questions which are potentially out of your league, things that you might not even have studied in depth and spend extra time. Now in FE Electrical and Computer exam, there are 17 sections. When I have one-on-one -on -one Zoom call with students who enroll into my FE Electrical and Computer exam preparation course, I tell my students that think of calculator know-how as section number 18 of your exam specification because the amount of time that you're going to spend on learning this calculator will actually pay you back during the game day. Tip number two is to develop familiarity with NCSFE Reference Handbook which in addition to your calculator is the only resource that is available to you during the exam. If you're just getting started with the FE Electrical and Computer exam or any other FE exam, my recommendation is to take a deep dive into the exam specification topics without even diving into any of the technical details. That will help you sort of map out what this exam entails. Now the second recommendation along the same topic is to make sure that you are able to zone in on the relevant sections of NCSFE Reference Handbook for your particular exam. NCSFE Reference Handbook, unlike the P Power Reference Handbook that they've developed, is covering all the disciplines essentially, all the FE exams. So you need to first of all make sure which sections, which areas of the handbook are applicable to you. There are some general areas which are applicable to multiple disciplines. So obviously there will be that type of overlap. And in a lot of cases, the bookmarks in the NCSFE Reference Handbook do a very good job in categorizing and lumping the disciplines together. But it is your responsibility to make sure that you create that mental map and are able to focus on the topics that are relevant to you. In my on-demand FE Electrical and Computer Exam Preparation course, I cross-reference NCSFE Reference Handbook sections so that when students are going through all the 17 sections of the exam, that they know which 
topic relates to which section and even which page number of the NCSFE reference handbook. The key is to make sure how the reference handbook is laid out and basically extract the information as required. Remember, we only have three minutes to solve the problem and if you're spending excessive amount of time, that will be extremely counterproductive. I am not a big fan of Control F feature. I know a lot of students like to use it. My recommendation is that if you're just getting started with your exam preparation, try and make use of the bookmarks. And obviously, if all else fails, then you can use Control F. But the issue with Control F is that it's going to return so many different results that, again, you will be bouncing back and forth. So when you're under pressure, you're nervous, you don't want to be jumping from one section of the handbook to another section. So if you develop your familiarity with NCSA Reference Handbook, using the bookmarks, it's going to be a lot more effective and it will help you a lot during the exam. Tip number three is sort of journal and I like to call it in-depth studying. In-depth studying is going to help you consolidate all the knowledge that is required for that particular concept. As soon as you look at a question and you'll be able to get started with solving the problem rather than thinking about it from left, right, center, top, bottom, and as soon as you see a question related to that topic, you're able to essentially jump on it. And that's why in-depth, immersive, active learning pays dividends. My tip number four is not to spend too much time on topics, on questions that you know that are out of your league. It is very important to be realistic during the exam. So if you come across a question which you feel like is maybe doable or maybe it's difficult, but let's give it a shot. Unfortunately, you are going to eat that time from other questions which you might possibly be able to solve much quickly. If you come across a question that is difficult, then flag it. If it's out of your league, flag it and move on and don't think about that question. And then if you come across a question which is sort of relatively easy, then jump on it, solve it right then and there. So knock all of them out, then go back to the flags, look at the next level of difficulty questions, solve them. And as a final round, if you have some time left over, then take a shot at the questions that are out of your league and never leave any question unanswered. So even if you have to randomly select something, randomly select something, but don't leave any question unanswered. I have a bonus tip, tip number five for students who are preparing for F electrical and computer exam. And that is to try and complete the morning session as fast as you can without compromising obviously the quality and without making uh, mistakes. So try and complete the morning session as fast as you can so that you can donate some time for the afternoon session. As you probably know, a lot of students find the morning session easier than the afternoon session. There are possibly multiple reasons. My take on it is that in the morning you are fresh, your focus is good, so that's why you're able to find those questions and you're able to think through those problems much more effectively. In the afternoon session, that's not the case. You have already spent two and a half hours or maybe more, so your energy levels have sort of drowned a little bit. The second reason is that the afternoon session is full of electrical and computer exam focused questions, which tend to be a little bit more difficult. Whatever the reason is, if you're able to save time from the morning session and donate it to the afternoon session, you're possibly improving your chances of passing this exam. In summary, time management is arguably one of the most critical components of successful execution of your FE exam preparation during the exam. And the five tips that I've discussed in this video are going to help you better manage your time during the FE exam. And if you're looking for an effective exam preparation resource for your FE electrical and computer exam preparation, I would recommend you to check out our on-demand FE electrical and computer exam preparation course. You can find that on the website www.studyforfe.com or in the link of this video below. Thank you.